I have no cosplay experience. You might know the Dokumi, which is a cosplay convention, and I wanna go there. I initially planned to do Atsushi, which was my first cosplay ever, but... With the release of Tears of the Kingdom, I kind of changed my mind. I just like Link, okay? So I started looking up cosplays and surprise, none of them are available or are going to arrive on time. Great! I was just like, hmm, I'm not gonna let that stop me. I'm just gonna make a cosplay. One part of me was like, how am I going to do this with no cosplay experience to begin with? But the other half was like, Link. This is my journey have fun. First I had to gather materials. Link's arm was my biggest worry because I didn't know how to fit it on the arm and to take it off the arm again and I had to find a material that was bendable. I tested out a few materials with gold paint and <laughs> let me tell you none of it was successful because it just broke apart and then my entire workplace was just a mess. Now this problem stayed unsolved for quite a while because I had to get started. So I started with my second biggest worry, the battery. Not only did I want to build it, I also wanted to make it glow. So I went to the dollar store and I found these tiny plastic cups, which was actually a big coincidence because I needed exactly eight of them and the package contained exactly eight. And also they're not available anymore. They're out of stock to this day. You can see these tiny grip thingies. I didn't need them, so I cut them off. Then I found some paper pearls or whatever this is and I cut them apart so it looked kind of like this and then I put it on top of the lids with a paper circle on top so it would look kind of like the batteries. I wanted to spray it with gold but first I painted it with black because I needed that as a base for the gold to not have white spots underneath and then I sprayed it and I was happy with that. Preparing the tiny cups was a bit complicated because I had to put a hole into the bottom and I don't have a drill. So I did it all with my box cutter. It was really challenging and exhausting, but I managed to find a technique to make it work. It doesn't look that clean, but this part is not gonna be shown anyway. For the spine of the battery, I just cut a lot of cardboard and then I put holes into the sides and attached more cardboard with openings for the tiny cups. I had an empty chewing gum package in my shelf for about a year because I thought like maybe I'm gonna need it for something and yes, I did need it for something. I used it for the top, which looks like this. continued to paint everything black. I was thinking like, how can I make this light up? I struggled a bit with the green color and then a switch flipped. I bought green gift wrap. I cut it apart, put it in the cups and I just put some tiny lights in. Done. Then I spent a lot of time painting everything. Once I was done painting, I wired everything and glued it together. Man, did I use tons of hot glue. And now it's safe to carry around. And now, with the first step done, my inspiration was gone. <laughs> so, this is one of the points where doubts start to come up. Especially doubts like, do I even fit this character? There's no way I can say that now. I just have to finish it and look for myself. I did continue and I started it off with a very simple belt. It's just a leather belt that's braided, so I braided leather strings. Very simple, very effective. I first didn't know how to do the shoulder strap, but I managed to buy foam. And foam is a lifesaver when it comes to cosplay crafting. Thank you for whoever it was for creating foam. The shoulder strap is of course hollow on the inside so I can put the braid through. I just had a problem for it to stay in form because it was always straight like this. I put a hairband on it overnight and see there it's curved. If you're wondering what the white thing is, it's gesso, which is a primer because acrylic paint will not hold on foam if you just apply it blankly. Once I applied the gesso, I was able to apply color perfectly and the leather belt was done. Now of course the outfit has another belt. 
because other belt has teeth like shapes on there. I didn't know what to use for that. I did some research and I found out that a thing called foam clay exists, which works perfectly with foam, by the way. Thank you to the people who created foam clay. It took some time to dry, but it's a really light material, which is perfect and exactly what I was looking for. Now there was one problem, which is the shape, because it's really like round and teeth are not necessarily round with soft edges. <laughs> I kind of cut it apart a bit and it looks really rough now, which is exactly what I want, so it's perfect. And of course they're brown, so I had to paint them. I put them all on a stick and this time I used spray glue for cars, <laughs> which also works as a primer. For safety reasons, I went outside because you should not really breathe in the fumes. So once I was done, they had a tiny film of glue on there. And then I just applied paint, put them all on a leather string and done. Another item finished. So for the gray clothing part, I ordered a skirt. Ta -da! As you can see, it's pretty long and of course Link's outfit is not that long, but since the upper part is attached to the skirt, I take the upper layer and there's another one beneath it. I'm gonna use this for this part, like this. But now that's a bit much fabric, so what I want to do is I'm gonna fold it and sew that onto here so it's kind of double layered and more puffy. Once it's puffy, I'm gonna take this and put it up here and I'm simply gonna cut a hole through here so I can fit my arm through. And now for the skirt, I want it to be about this short and wear safety pants underneath because uh, wind is a thing. I want to cut off this part, then sew it back here so it's layered as well. That is the plan. It's so beautiful. I don't want to cut it apart, but I have no other choice. And it's funny how I said I'm gonna sew it because that's gonna be my sister's job. <laughs> She's gonna do all the sewing work because I am not able to. I don't even have a sewing machine. She does. The same time around, my gloves arrive. If you're asking yourself, what are the gloves for? They're for Link's arm. <laughs> now, I did not know how to apply anything to the glove, because which glue does stick onto this material? I had no idea, but the solution was simple. Hot glue. It holds like bump fist, like we say in Germany, like really, really, really strong. It has a strong grip. I want to get it accurate, so Roru's arm does have long nails. And of course, I wanted to apply them too. So I bought a bunch of fake nails, put them on there. I had to put heat protection onto my fingers because I had to glue them on as I was wearing the glove, but eventually it worked. I think the nails are black, but when Link uses his special abilities, the hand turns blue and I wanted to make it look as if the nails are turning blue. <laughs> about the rest of the arm. It's really detailed, which was my biggest worry for a reason. Because how are you going to attach it to your body? I decided to start off with the rings because it's easy to put rings on your hand. I used foam again, put it on a paper stick, primed it with spray glue and put gold spray on it. At this point, it looked a bit too clean for me. So I applied some brown and black paint to make it look more worn down, if that makes sense. When I first tried it on, I was <laughs> really happy. I didn't quite know if the wig was gonna arrive in time, but it did. And I was so excited, I kind of accidentally scooped a bit of skin out of my thumb. Be careful with scissors, kids. Motivated how I was, I started working on the shoes. I bought some extra sandals because I cannot make shoes myself and run around the whole day in them without them breaking or being uncomfortable. So I decided to make some kind of stocking. To be able to put it on, I used elastic bands at the top and at the bottom part of the stocking. And then I just needed some fake leather bands. My plan was to wrap them around the leg and kind of fixate them when they cross. I struggle a bit figuring it out because hot glue does not hold on fake leather. So that day I had to finish this one because if I had taken it off my leg without everything being fixed together, it would just have broken apart and I did not want that. So I just used black strings. It worked in the meantime, but I didn't want to leave it like that. Anyway, I had to stop because I was really not feeling well that day and I didn't know that I <laughs> would be losing a few days in the process. It was an experience that I would not recommend. Please don't judge me, I look 
absolutely destroyed. <laughs> Around Wednesday I caught a gastrointestinal flu and the last three days have been hell. You don't want to know the details. On Wednesday when I was getting worse I made this. In the process I started feeling so sick and nauseous that I have a feeling that if I start working on a second one that this feeling will come back. I think that's just paranoia from my side. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my, my head is kind of weird sometimes. First, to overcome this fear, I'm gonna try to start dyeing the t-shirt. Ah! You probably know what this is supposed to be. It's a plain green shirt, oversized. I just need one third of the entire thing. And I also want to do the triangles, but that's for later. It's a very green green. You can use it for a green screen. <laughs> That's the perfect green to use for a green screen. I'm attempting to make it look a bit more natural. That is why I bought olive textile color. I want to tone it down a bit. Let's go. Um, did it work? I don't know. I think it's slightly more olive. It looks better to me at least. This is the finished result. Getting that whole thing to fit on here was not easy. We struggled a lot. I made my sister suffer a lot, but she did a really good job. I also told her that she didn't have to make it that clean on this side because the green fabric is gonna be here. If you're asking how exactly we did that we don't even know ourselves. It was a trial and error kind of experience. I'm not gonna wear a black top under this but bandages because I cannot just you know. And also I'm just gonna order some short pants. Now if you take the belt this is perfect. At that time I was finally ready to overcome my inner demons because I don't want to go to a con with only one shoe. So I can't so I continued to work on it. I also found a solution. I secured it with very thin golden wire because no matter how much you bend it, the wire's not gonna rip apart, which is great because they're kind of hard to put on. And this looks kind of rough. So I finished it off with some foam clay and brown paint. It's not perfect, but hey, from afar, it looks pretty good. I can't complain. It's my first cosplay. <laughs> And there really was no time to be a perfectionist. So I quickly took care of the arm. I cut apart these foam pieces. Here you can see me being responsible and wearing a face mask. And there was a problem because after I applied the spray glue it curved and I didn't know how to uncurve it. <laughs> I just left it like that, sprayed gold paint on it and applied some more black and brown paint to make it look rough. Oh and yeah, my idea to make it as simple as possible was to apply velcro. I did only find white velcro and it shows on the arm. It shows if you uh, look at it in the wrong angle. It's not perfect, but I still like it. I'm really proud of how it turned out. The only thing that's glued on there is of course the nails and also the handpiece on here, which was also a challenge because you know how the glove looks if it's not stretched. So yeah, I applied hot glue while it was on my hand, but I managed to apply some heat protection and I did not hurt myself. <laughs> Wig styling. Hmm, <laughs> now I'm not one person to give you tips for wig styling because I have, like I said, zero experience. But I know some basics. At first I kind of teased it. Once you've done this, it looks really horrible, but then you just have to apply hairspray and just brush it out. It works perfectly and it's fluffy afterwards. It has texture. I kind of took the tips of some hair strands and put hairspray on there. Don't know if you actually do that, but it worked. <laughs> As I was getting closer and closer to finishing it, there was only one thing left. It was more work than it sounds because you cannot just cut the triangles out of the fabric and sew them together. Well, you can technically do that, but they will be very floppy and curvy because it's just loose fabric. Before my sister told me that, I didn't even think of that. I don't work with fabric a lot, but yeah, it definitely makes sense. She told me to find a solution to stabilize them. So my solution was foam and 
then sew that foam into the fabric. My biggest respect for my sister. Her sewing machine is kind of broken and like she had to do 18 triangles and like half of them just broke because the machine was like I hate you. These are the triangles in question and then it was my job to apply them to the shirt. I did not know how to sew them together. My sister had to show me that. It's not even complicated but it's basic knowledge that I did not know. <laughs> final day, the final step, which was bleaching the sleeve. It was not complicated at all, I just applied bleach and it looks cool. That's the finished look. Again, it's not perfect, but I like how it looks and I'm proud of it. That's the most important thing. If you put a lot of effort in, you can be proud of yourself. And on that day, I put it on. I bought black body paint and it looks good. It applies perfectly. Can't complain. And this is my first ever handmade cosplay and my second cosplay of all time. I'm really proud. I feel great. And I have to say, it kind of fits me as well. Of course, no makeup back here, but I will apply it once I go to the con. I think overall, everything looks really nice. How do you film yourself in cosplay? I have no idea. I also don't have a set. <laughs> do you want to see my improvisation? <laughs> so here's a bed sheet. Then here we have a flashlight with blue light coming from it. Ta-da! Then I have some lighting here, but I didn't have a green lamp, so I just took my trash can. And it shines green light on here. And of course, a fan to really get that pretty wind effect. Let's see how it goes. transferred the bed sheet to my closet because it's much bigger and I didn't have to kneel down like this. I have cramps in my legs now, but man, it was great. Here are some finished results. that I'm like that's me I don't even know if it looks good on me but the cosplay I'm so so proud of it I can't believe that this journey is over but this Sunday it will get the attention it deserves I'm gonna wear it the whole day at the dokumi and I'm probably gonna put some experiences into the video You probably want to know how it went. I kind of redid the wig styling and added way more spikes because I felt like the wig was lacking something. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a bit. Um, it was definitely a first time experience, but let me explain. We had to drive six hours. We arrived on Saturday so we could attend the con on Sunday, right? But we spontaneously decided to pack a second simple cosplay because we wanted to go to the Japanese garden on Saturday evening. And we did that, it was all fine. And then the next day arrived. It's uh, it's a bit colder than expected. It's like uh, 16 degrees Celsius. I'm not freezing. That's that's great for you. Yeah, later that day my sister was cold too. <laughs> but I think it's gonna be warm inside. But at, at least I hope so. It was so cold. I chose this cosplay on purpose because I expected it to be really warm. Yeah, surprise, it was not. I worked hard on this cosplay and of course I wanted to wear it. So yeah, I did. Once we were in there, we had to look for our friends, which took a while. And then we walked across all the halls to like 
get an overview. Of course, I wanted to get to the gaming section and then my friends told me to pose in front of the poster and I was so embarrassed because you're just seeing me. But on the other side, there were so many people and then they told me to like do the flexing pose that Link does in Breath of the Wild. As you can see on my face, I was pretty embarrassed. That's when we decided to sit down and drink bubble tea, which we should not have done, at least me. I call this picture moments before disaster because this bubble tea contained a lot of artificial sweetener, which I do not digest well. I slowly started to feel unwell. I just thought it was the excitement and the sheer mass of humans. Now, a lot of people wanted to take pictures with me, which I'm really glad about because I felt so appreciated. They wanted to take pictures with me because they thought like I portrayed the character well and I was so happy about that. And even though that made me really happy, my body was not. At some point I started to get so nauseous and I had such a stomach ache and I just sat down in the middle of that area and then someone came up and wanted to take a picture with me. He could see that I was not doing well, but I was like, yeah, let's, let's take a picture, it's fine. And he was like, yeah, you can lean up against me if you need help. And I was like, yeah, thank you. And I was standing there on his shoulder like, I wish I could have enjoyed it more. At this point I was just existing. We went outside to get some fresh air and then I saw like this other Zonai Link and Sidon. And then I was like, damn, these people look so good. I wanted to take pictures with them. And then my sister was like, do it. And I was like, okay, let's just stand up. Let's just walk up to them. And I was, that was the best decision ever because I took pictures with them and then they were like, are you going to the Zelda meetup too? And I was like, uh, Zelda meetup? Is that today? Yeah, that kind of saved my day because I got distracted a bit by it. I met a lot of nice people. I took a lot of pictures with amazing cosplayers and we did a little dance. I got to meet so many nice people and yeah, that made it worth it. But my sister and I still decided to leave the con an hour early because it was a long day. It was chaotic. <laughs> It's kind of crowded here. That's the least amount of people I saw that day. <laughs> We're going home. I'm a bit <laughs> overwhelmed. Cloud. 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 There's so many clouds here. Yeah. Everyone is so pretty. Oh my yes. God. <laughs> what is going on? Too many people. Why are people barking? We're always running into pictures. It's insane. Oh my god. But my feet are actually fine. I don't have any blisters at all. I have my little toe hurts as f <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Overall, it was definitely an interesting first big con experience. <laughs> I felt destroyed. I'm still glad I went there. And I will be going to more cons. Definitely. So um, this is the first video on my new channel. Whoever is watching this, welcome. Make yourself at home. I hope you enjoy my content. And yeah, I just love creating things. There will be more. Until then, have a nice day, evening or night. And see you next time.